she, she asked, when do you uh, denounce the protection from the RICO Act? But the RICO Act falls under citizens. Curing and influencing a corrupt organization. <laughs> there you go. Short for all the yeah. Racketeering. Yeah. Racketeering. Okay, so Racketeering, yeah. how many people believe they get their rights from the Constitution? Raise your hand. No, from God. That's great, okay. So what we did is we took our rights that come from God. Oh, I shouldn't put that up below that. I should really start over here. Let's go like this. Rights come from God. Anybody disagree with that? No. Okay. Now, so here's man. And we have a covenant between God and man. And there's no one between it. Unless somebody's come up with some new documentation. I believe the Rockefellers tried to hide some of that stuff. I don't even know the guy, but I heard he did. Okay, so then man, what man did is they created the Constitution, realistically, to keep the government at bay. Right. Because they had lots and lots of problems. These guys that created the Constitution were so smart and so intelligent. They, had been, they're, they're, they were where we're at right now. Okay? They understood what tyranny was. When I read what John, James Madison wrote, some of the things that uh, Ben Franklin wrote, those guys were so intelligent. And I mean liars in a good way. Liars in fact instead of liars in law. Okay, so underneath the government, the government created these corporations. And at first it was a pretty good deal. But what they thought is, hey, why don't we start a corporation called the U.S. and we'll sneak these guys underneath this. We'll, we'll, we'll get some state corporations and then we'll get some county corporations. Does anybody know that their state is incorporated? Does anybody, everybody know that? Yep. You can pull it up and look and see what they're doing, how much they're making. And then underneath the county, their city corporations. They just come right out and say it. I got some paperwork from the city of Salt Lake, and it said, a corporation, city of Salt Lake. They're right out there telling the other corporation. And then below the cities and all that stuff, they've got, I'm going to write this out, straw man. Okay? What they did is they got your mom to give you to the state. She was the informant on your birth certificate. She tattled on your dad for abandoning you. So she gave up all of her rights and gave it to the county or the state, mostly the state. So that's where that is. Now, the evidence of this is Bill of Lading Act really goes into some depth on that, and it talks about vessels. And vessels are always spelled with all capital letters. It says it in the manual for the United States, manual for, for words and documentation. So if, if you're an all-vessel, if you're an all-capitals letter name and you're a vessel, You've agreed to the terms and conditions of all these contracts of levy. So what you did is you gave up your rights for benefits and privileges. Now, if anybody has ever lived at home with their dad, and you come home drinking, and your dad says, hey, no TV, you're going to get out there in the yard, and you're going to work. You're in prison for three days because you were out drinking. He took away my benefits and privileges. Now, when I get to be 21, 22 years old, and I had my own place, I went out drinking. My dad comes over and knocks on my door and says, hey, you've been out drinking. You're going to come over to my house. <laughs> You're not going to watch no TV. And I go, hey, I gave up my benefits and privileges. I have rights now. I'm my own man. You can't come over here and tell me what to do. Is that making sense to you guys? So do you want benefits or privileges, or do you want rights? How do you change a contract? Amend it. You amend it. So how do you give up your benefits and privileges back for rights? There's only one person can do that. Excuse me, person is a bad name too. Person is yeah. down here. There's only one living man that can do that, and that's you, right there. And you can change that by amending con your, the contracts that you've agreed to. And believe me, there's lots of them. Your driver's license is a contract, social security card's a contract. All those things are contracts, and they just get you so entangled that if they ain't hitting you from the left, they're kicking you in the butt from behind. There's nothing you can do unless you change your status to a secure party creditor. So I want to tell you that's really great stuff. Go ahead. you got a lot of um, party to notify them, obviously. Um, most everyone here notified 18 huge agencies. <laughs> I'm a little different. I went ahead and did 20 because <laughs> I got a surprise for some people, but uh, <laughs> things are good. I want I to tell you that when you understand what I understand, you go to bed at night and, and you sleep really good because you know who you are. And the good news is, is the judges and the corporation, a lot of them, they really respect you when you know what you do and you know what you do for a good reason and why you're doing it. They don't have to be pirates with us anymore. We're just going to help them fund their deal. I would say they know uh, a lot from the judges' school. 
And if they don't know and they get a problem case that comes through, they're calling their friends that are already up at the top of the ladder and wondering, asking what to do. Because, see, if they get any black marks on their record, they don't get to move up as fast. And all of them want to get to the top. They all do. Because there's some serious money at the top for judges in the Supreme Court or in the Superior Courts. Okay? So it's all greed-oriented. Well, I just did, in a, in a roundabout way. The RICO doesn't pertain to any living man. RICO is only for slaves. It's really for all the people down at the bottom of the pile. Now, you can. there's two ways to handle your life. You can, you can continue to be a slave and scream bloody murder about living conditions. Or you can just take the key, unlock the, the handcuffs, and go start your own. You don't have to be a slave. In, in, the, in all their rule books and law books, it says that involuntary servitude is unlawful. Only voluntary servitude is lawful. And we've all volunteered for the deal. Well, here's another thing. I saw a district court cases where they, they ruled that, that even the TSA was was uh, by uh, permission. Where you, you sure. have to grant them permission. Sure. So if you say, I do not consent, even taking off my shoes, right? please escort me to the plane. Right. Uh, it, it should work, but I don't. I've never tried it. But then I thought, well, if I try it, <laughs> uh, all I can say is I, I pick my battles, and that's not a big one for me right now. But a lot of times, people don't get all their ducks in a row before they, they go out and take on the government, and a lot of people are in a in a hurry to get their stuff done because of either some cases that have come up or somebody has made some allegations against you. If you set out and build your build your house on a solid foundation and you don't start building the third floor and then try and jack it up and put a second floor underneath it, <laughs> jack it up, put a first floor underneath it. Any contractors know what I'm talking about. you got to start with the foundation and it has to be good, square, plumb, and smooth and ready to go. And if it is, then you can move on to the next step. Now, I've been very cautious along the way so that I can defend everything that I do, either in court or out of court, or have even the IRS show up and, and want to ask me some questions. So first thing we like to do is make sure that they're happy with us. You agree with them? Okay? So when we say pay your taxes, we mean it. Pay your taxes. Okay? We are all for it. In fact, we pay extra. Help? Right. 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 right on. So you can play this on the video. Mr. Harris, <laughs> we're, we're all on the Paying the taxes. Okay. Question? Yeah, earlier when you were talking about like, signing a ticket or something, you said you're going to close it in a box. But you know, my signature, I get a little wild with it. Yeah, keep it in the box. <laughs> okay. Keep it in the box, buddy. Write real small. Okay. Thomas. I've been writing my name and then putting the box afterwards. Yeah. And it's always in the box. Well, if they see you do that, he could actually, that's a technicality. And he, they could say you signed it first and then boxed it, and that made it part of the contract before you boxed it. Oh. Uh, yeah. Okay. It's called a longe. Anybody know what a longe means? A L L O U N G. Okay. Look, these are, is anybody taking notes? Yeah. These are some great words to look up a longe. You're being recorded. All right, good. Uh, go ahead. I have a question that's going way back to the Postal Service. Company. Okay. It's of interest to me because I've been working for him for nearly 30 years. Well, good to have you here. And the whole time <laughs> I've worked for him is I hear this line that it's a quasi-governmental corporation, blah, blah, blah. So I'm looking at it it's like, okay, it's neither fish nor fowl. It's not private. It's not really the government. What the hell is it? And, and that's a, a question I would like answered because that, okay. that, that speaks to my status to a great deal. Okay, you um you you sold two different forms of, of registration to get mail across to anybody. You had certified and you had registered. Okay. The certified stickers are printed out by the US Post Office. The registered mails are printed by Bern, Switzerland. So when you send something registered mail, that has to be handled through international contract. So when you when you use that registered mail, okay, when you register something internationally, it takes precedence over the top of U.S. jurisdiction. So oh, we send stuff registered mail. And you probably know about the $21, which is, 
we we just put the $21 on the envelope for anything really important because what that does, it takes it out of U.S. jurisdiction. If there's a problem, it's handled through international. The Interpol. Hague. Hague. Court Hague. So all these things, you see, we were, we were taught that the U.S. is just the ultimate power corporation and they were the last word and if they said it, you're dead. Everybody's shaking their head. But agree with me that that's the way it was. I mean, we... I believe that all, all the way through when I was driving a truck, man. If the judge said you're going to pay $500, well, I started figuring out how I could get 500 bucks. I mean, who do you appeal it to? You know, they're all buddies. So when you find out that they are not, the cool part is when they know that you know, they treat you different. Okay? I was, I was joking around. I was joking around. I would say, man, if, if you were a foreigner from France and you were here driving... Okay, and before you left France, okay, you're, you're, let's say you're a multi-billionaire, and you have a trust account, and before you come to the United States, you sent an insurance policy, and you notified all the agencies saying, "Hey, I've got an insurance, and by the way, I've got a checking account that I just opened up, and if there's any problems, I'm going to give you my number so that you can cash a check for anything that I do, including tickets. I don't pay my water bill." I hit somebody's dog accidentally, you know. And so you're coming along and you're driving over here, man. And all of a sudden the red lights come on. You're all set. Am I right? Yep. You got everything covered. All crimes are commercial here in the United States. He gets pulled. You get pulled over and the guy comes up and goes, I need your license, registration, and insurance. Now here's my, my accent. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I do not have any of that. Well, why do I need a driver's license? I'm not part of the DMV Act. He says, well, if you don't have a license, I'm going to take you to jail. Well, I'm sorry to tell you this, but I already have a bond in place for you to access at my convenience so that there is no discourse between you and me and there's no default. <laughs> What's the cop going to say? What'd you say? <laughs> so he says, well, I'm going to write you a ticket. Okay, if you want to write me a contract, I will accept it under conditions that... You will use my bond and my checking account number to cover all accidents so I don't have to stop my life and go to your court because I don't play basketball very well. And I want you to just take care of all this for me. I'm not taking care of nothing for you, pal. Here's your ticket. So you get to court, right? And the judge says, what is your name? And you say... I don't know uh, what uh, importance uh, my name is because I already have the contract to fill that here. And I want to pay this immediately. Except that your officer did not give me a check already filled out with your account number so that I could sign it. Where's the check? And the judge says, uh oh. I'll tell you what I'm going to do, judge. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to accept this one right here as a valuable object. I'm going to sign it and I'm going to give it to you right now so that everything is covered. I'm here in three days before the uh, common law, uh, which I'm uh, accustomed to in my town, we have to take care of everything in three days. Three days, no more than three days. We always take care of everything three days. So we stay in And I want to take care of this right now. You go ahead and access my check. And by the way, you can put on extra fees for your salary, retirement, and maybe some really good dog food for your dog. You know? <laughs> because I know that you coming down here every day to uh, argue with the slaves yeah. is really a problem for you. And I want to make sure that you have a plenty for you and your family. I appreciate you coming in. Thank you. I bid you adieu. And you walk out. Now that's the way it's supposed to be taken care of. Now if you guys understand what I'm saying, someday you're going to be telling stories about this. Okay? How do you like it? I didn't even bring up the min key. Okay, so... <laughs> Go ahead. You, wh whatever you want to do is okay. You just got to understand what you're doing. If you put it outside there, okay, they may send it back to you and tell you that you didn't put it in the box. They, they may. They may just accept it. And if you make a copy of that, you may have. Be, you may be building a case for later on. If you make copies of all the stuff that you do, if you know how to defend that. Do you, I'm, I'm sorry, I can't get real specific with you because. This is how I would do things, and I can't tell you exactly how I would do it, because if you do it and you don't know how to defend it, you'll have some problems. The good news is is that there is a shining light at the end of the tunnel, and it's not a train going. If you guys, 
Um, the secure party creditor with Tim Turner is the um, most complete program there is. 